When is the best time to purchase a home in California? According to one real estate agent, without a crystal ball, nobody really knows. But one thing that is for sure is that many people appear to be priced out of the market. Entity's Jackie Rios has more from Los Angeles. If the American dream is to own a home, then the California version of that has become a nightmare. High prices are keeping most people out of the game. We talked to a real estate broker to find out if the average Californian has any hopes of becoming a homeowner. There are so few listings that have been put on the market in the last three or four years that it is a struggle for buyers to be able to get a home and they are competing with each other for that same house. So lack of inventory and lots of buyers with nothing to buy. Claudia Story, a real estate broker in Southern California, has been in the business for 35 years. She listed several reasons for the high prices. It's, it's a lack of inventory that's driven up the prices and great interest rates. You know, we had interest rates maybe 2 3% for quite a while, and so that also has encouraged people to want to buy. Uh, buyers will make maybe 15, 16 offers on properties before they find one that they can actually successfully buy. She said the competition is so intense that people are not only paying completely with cash, but also waiving standard procedures like inspections. Um, but you're going to need 20% down most of the time to have your offer accepted. You can make an offer with a 3% or 5% down, but you're going to be in competition with people that have all cash. And, and they're going for sometimes 300000 over asking price just to secure the property. We just had that last week. Story said most of the cash is coming from one specific foreign country. It's mainly coming from China. It is um, amazing what you see in cash and a lot of the families over there are pooling their money together and buying property here in this state. Um, my own home as a personal example is I've had people who paid over three million dollars cash for a home and they haven't moved in yet but they are bringing their money here so that it's safer. All those cash only purchases are driving up prices too. A lot of those formerly cash buyers are actually getting loans now. They're finding they've got their money over here, they've had it here for a while, and so they're able to get a loan and leverage their money better. Um, but it's absolutely pushed prices way sky high. Stories say that in Los Angeles, the average price of a 3,000 square foot house with three to four bedrooms and two bathrooms is over $1 million. Neighboring Orange County is about the same price. In the greater LA area, San Bernardino is the most affordable, with averages of over $600,000. Jack Urios, NTD News, Los Angeles. Just two days after the Texas school shooting, the state Senate passed a bill that may leave California schools more vulnerable to similar attacks. Citing equity, a new Senate bill will no longer require schools to report threats from students to police. The California Senate passed a bill that ends a mandatory requirement for schools to notify the police of any violent threats. Senate Bill 1273 passed the upper house on May 26th, just two days after the Uvalde, Texas school shooting. The former law required anyone aware of a school official being attacked, assaulted, or physically threatened by any pupil to promptly report the incident. Anyone who failed to do so could face a fine up to $1,000. Senator Melissa Melendez of Lake Elsinore opposed the bill, calling it a terrifying policy. We have seen an increase in violence at our schools. And in too many cases, there are instances where a school and parents or caregivers try their hardest to intervene, to redirect, to do some progressive discipline, to get the kid back on track, and it doesn't work. And the end result is other people's children die because of it. She said she can't believe that just two days after the heartbreaking events in Texas, the state Senate would pass a measure making our children less safe at school. Melendez added, requiring teachers to report threats of violence in the classroom may be the only warning law enforcement has to prevent a future violent attack. Senator Stephen Bradford, representing Los Angeles, introduced the bill. He told the Daily Caller that the previous law has led to alarming disparities in both non-white students and students with disabilities. He believes they are the most likely to face arrest. The American Civil Liberties Union praised the bill as promoting racial equity. 
The bill moves to a vote in the California State Assembly. If it passes, it will then go to Governor Gavin Newsom for a signature. Daniel Hall, NTD News, California. Police, along with the Attorney General, announced a major gang takedown in Stockton. Law enforcement say the gangs are allegedly responsible for multiple crimes in the area. Let's take a look at the details. The city manager for the city Stockton, of Stockton Police and California uh, Attorney General Rob Bonta announced a multi-agency collaboration that led to a gang takedown. Named Hybrid Havoc, law enforcement investigated at least six different gangs in the city. Investigators authored 24 residential search warrants and arrested 90 subjects related to the various crime violations. In a press release, Bonta accused 90 violent gang members of murder, conspiracy to commit murder, and firearms and narcotics trafficking. In all, investigators recovered 58 firearms, including 12 ghost guns, 10 assault weapons. Investigators seized approximately $23,000 in U.S. currency, confiscated 394 grams of cocaine, 959 grams of ecstasy, 98 grams of methamphetamines, 73 grams of heroin, 54 grams of fentanyl, and 5.3 pounds of marijuana. Law enforcement said the investigation also led to the solving of two homicides. It includes the February murder of Mark Scott, a special education teacher at Pulliam Elementary School. Uh, but today we affirm law enforcement isn't only about solving crimes, while it certainly is about that, it's also about preventing them. I know our work is not done. This is DOJ's sixth gang takedown in the last year, as I mentioned, and there will be more because we won't stop until every child in Stockton and across California grows up safe. Officials called the operation one of the largest takedowns of organized crime in San Joaquin County. A fentanyl overdose hospitalized three girls in Los Angeles last month. The local school district issued a warning against the drug at the beginning of this month in response. The Los Angeles Unified School District issued a health alert on June 1st, warning parents and students about the dangers of fentanyl-laced drugs after three LAUSD students overdosed last week. The three teenage girls were hospitalized May 25th after consuming a drug laced with fentanyl. Officials said the students thought they were buying ecstasy online. In a statement, Superintendent Alberto Carvalho said, Parents are encouraged to have discussions with your child about making healthy choices and about the dangers of ingesting any illicit drugs, especially as we enter into end-of-year celebrations and the summer. The County Public Health Department released an alert stating there is a strong likelihood these drugs are being distributed throughout the community. Mothers Against Drug Deaths, a group of parents calling for more drug regulation, marched on the state capitol last month demanding Governor Gavin Newsom to do more to solve the state's fentanyl crisis. Since the pandemic lockdowns, parents have been more involved in their children's education. Some don't like what they're seeing and turn to other sources for education, like homeschooling. They found a nonprofit that aims to boost self-esteem by using a more creative and appealing approach to teach American history. NTD's Eileen hears more from the founder. Paul Hemphill is an author, speaker, and veteran. He started American Education Defenders in 2020 as a direct response to the negative classroom influences on the self-esteem of our nation's children. This message that we give is, is universal, and it's all about human nature. It's all about activating the good uh, aspects of human nature in each of us uh, and bring it to the fore so our kids can really appreciate themselves and the country in which they uh, grew up in. Users subscribe to America's 52 Stories and watch a full-length video every Wednesday for 52 weeks. It helps students relate to the subject matter better so they feel connected. Although he's based in Massachusetts, 73% of his subscribers are from California. What I do is that I tell stories inside the word. History is the word story. And stories are made up of people who make good and bad decisions. And so the way we want to help our kids grow up and become better uh, individuals and better citizens is to show them how people made bad decisions and good decisions from our country's past. 
Example lessons include keeping a sense of humor, balancing enthusiasm with responsibility, focusing on results, not excuses, treating failure as a valuable teacher, emphasizing quality, and speaking up to get respect. Hemphill believes his program can help students more than critical race theory or CRT in schools. I've had people say to me, Paul, your program is the only program out there that counters、uh, critical race theory, where everything coming from critical race theory makes you want to hate yourself, hate your country, whereas everything from your program makes the student want to really like themselves, appreciate themselves, and appreciate the country in which all these freedoms and opportunities are available. The company is inspired from a best selling book he wrote in 2018 called Inspiration for Teens. It consists of 200 life lessons from 88 true stories with moral values from American history. The stories are available on video and audio for homeschooling and personal growth. Grass in office parks, college campuses, and in some California neighborhoods will go brown this summer. State water officials adopted a ban last month on watering certain green spaces as the local drought drags on. NCD's Andrew Thomas has the details. In Manhattan Beach, California, water restrictions have been in place since January. Homeowner Palin Pratt decided to replace her lawn with artificial grass.、Um, we heard about the water restrictions in Los Angeles, and we just thought, boy, you know, this, if this isn't a sign, then I don't know what is. In nearby Los Angeles, officials have imposed restrictions on outdoor watering for customers with the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power. After three years of drought here in California, as well as the driest January, February, and March on record, which is over 100 years, we are experiencing significant supply shortages from our supplemental water supply sources、uh, from Northern California. Workers from landscaper Build Cal Turf cleared Pratt's front yard of its old dead grass before unrolling the artificial grass into place. You know, we like. Real grass. People like real wood, people like real things.、Um, but you realize how much water it takes to you know, keep your grass green. And all of that water and the runoff and everything else is just not necessary. California is in its third year of an acute drought. Starting June 10th, watering some grass outside won't be allowed. We have a ton of programs for anyone that's looking to remove their grass and make that switch to drought tolerant or sustainable landscaping.、Uh, we currently don't incentivize artificial turf because we want to go to more of a sustainable landscaping approach. Grass that can't be watered includes anything that's used for decoration and not for regular activities or events. The ban doesn't apply to parks, sports fields, people's lawns, or to watering trees. Andrew Thomas, NTD News.